Yo, YouTube, welcome in. Don't know who's going to be watching this, if I'm being honest, because my demographic is normally not very pop. Uh, my demographic is most definitely rap, and that is my forte. That is my expertise. Uh, and I actually am not like a Swifty, quote unquote. But whenever an artist, I know she's a big artist. I know exactly who she is. I know why she's popular. I listened to her at the beginning. I heard the whole album Fearless. I probably didn't really listen to an album like crazy until 1989. Then I skipped Red and then I listened to Folklore, which was on my top 10 albums that year that it came out. So I'm not like a dedicated Swifty, but I'm like here and there, I'll dabble. I'll dabble in her shit. But whenever she drops an album and whenever you take all 10 number one spots on the Billboard Hot 100 in the same week and you're the first artist to do that and you're about to sell out mad stadiums, you got to figure out why, right? How are you not going to listen? You know, so I've been waiting to, to listen with the people who are Swift fans. We're over here live on Twitch, as you can see. Um, I hope y'all guys enjoy the reaction and I hope I enjoy the album. I've not heard a single one. The only thing that I've heard is obviously Karma, the hook, because every woman in the history of existence on social media is using it as some kind of sound. So I've heard that. But other than that, I've stayed pretty much clear of Taylor's whole album to make sure I can make this reaction. Yo, past me from editing, but future me from time of recording this video. Forgot to say, definitely follow on Patreon if y'all guys want to catch this full album reaction along with other album reactions that we've done. We're going to do Joji. We're going to do Drake. We're literally anybody who's anybody. We have the full the full length stream album review raw in its form on Patreon. Also, if y'all guys want to see non-music related content, please consider subscribing to the second channel. That's kind of where we dabble in other things. We watch YouTube videos. We react to TikTok. We give commentary, movie reviews, all kinds of non-music related. Follow second channel. Also, subscribe to this channel, yo. I promise you'll have a great time. But other than that, socials down in the description below. Hit up Discord if you want to get guaranteed notifications because I know Twitch and YouTube don't always send them out on time. All these links in the description. Back to you, future Ernest. Let's get into it. Lavender Haze, track number one. It's already more, more poppy. Maybe because I just, maybe because the last album I listened to was Folklore. Is it me or is this production not normal for Taylor? Like, I feel this is much more, I don't know, how, do, how would I explain it? Like, like electronic? Not like, not like EDM production, but it's not as, and again, maybe it's because I came off of folklore where it's a lot of like live acoustic instrumentation. This much, this like has normal 808. It's not bad. It's just, I can understand why it's as hyped and why it's as listened to if the whole album sounds like this. is crazy bro that's sad. like that rise and then head like oh we got a bop on our hands ladies and gentlemen holy shit <laughs> bro this is a fire track holy shit this is a crazy opening track. I just heard the bass like bend down and go away. So I'm assuming we're going to get a crazy drop. Maybe I'm missing. I'm not missing something. Tell me if anybody's like a diehard fan of Taylor Swift. Like, is this like a whole new sound for her? Because I swear I've never heard Taylor on like this type of production. And she had the sound of Reputation. That's the only that isn't Reputation the album that dropped after the whole Kanye incident. I hate to bring it up because I don't like to bring it up because I don't want like it's surrounding the whole album review, but it just happens to be that she went on that darker sound. Cause I remember reputation being like her version of R, which was Rihanna's like venture into darker sound after the whole Chris Brown thing. Um, so I remember that album specifically because I remember it being after that monumental moment um, with Kanye. So this is fire. I like this. Only kind of girl he sees a one night or a wife no in between. Bro, this hook is hard. Hey, shit. <laughs> this is a banger, bro. Holy shit. 
It's giving me the same vibe. Do y'all remember when what's her name dropped that track Alaska? Uh, Maggie Rogers. Is that her name? When I had heard that drop or when I had heard that hook for the first time from Maggie Rogers Alaska track. It's that same level of like, oh, this is different. That's the same. That's the vibe that I'm getting for some reason. It's nice, bro. The vocal stacking is crazy. I like that snare drum feel. I'm taking it back right now, bro. That's okay. Okay, Taylor. Okay, Swizzle. I see you. This is the song I'm talking about, by the way. Watch, listen to this drop right here, and it's similar for me. Same vibes, which is fine because that track is a banger, too. We're one for one. Let's go to Maroon. So much darker, bro. I feel like the drums are so much more aggressive. Screw top rose. I see you every day. She's so relatable. crazy <laughs> all right one thing to know about me i am a sucker for a songwriter who can make me visually see the story that they're trying to convey she was talking about the screw top rose she was talking about staying up too light and cleaning off incense talking about like the sky and she can remember all of these like really visceral moments because these are the things that you see in your memory from a very important time everybody has those moments in their life where they can literally see every single detail about what was happening she's such a good songwriter bro the lips I used to call home, so The synths are nice. The use of synths is nice, but it's not like synth wave or it's not like synth pop, like the after hours or something like that. It just happens to be part of whatever the production style is versus like that is the whole production character. Sobbing with your head in your hands. Ain't that the way shit always ends? You are Such a good breakup writer. Sobbing with your head in your hands isn't the way that shit always ends. Carnations you had thought were roses. That's us. I feel Carnations you thought were roses? That's us. <laughs> that is a bar, bro. Carnations you thought were roses? We're not exactly what we look like we were, but I couldn't I could see how you mistake them for roses, but at the end of the day, we were carnations. I feel you no matter what the rubies that I gave up. I lost you, the one I was dancing with in New York, no shoes. First off, put on some shoes, motherfucker. New York is the dirtiest city in the country. We looked up at the sky and it was maroon. It's just giving me that like nostalgia, sentimental vibes. Literally like St. Vincent's song, New York. <laughs> Bro, it's so nice. So nice. Reyna, tell your teacher to throw this hoe up on the projector. We're talking about musical history right here. Top 10, all of them? How dare she be teaching class in the middle of this review of this historical moment? If anything, this should be extra credit. With your memory over me, that's a real fucking legacy. Legacy. 
I don't know why, but Taylor Swift cussing is like endearing to me because I just have like this mental image in my head of her and her music and it doesn't include cussing. When you splashed it one into me and how the blood rushed into my cheeks so scarlet. You splashed water at me and the blood rushed into my cheeks and they were so scarlet that it was maroon. Bro, the just like the way that her voice when she said right when she's saying it was and it like comes in like yeah, it was like that. That is hard. Bro, I love that. We're two for two. We're two for two. I don't even know which one I like more. This one gives me more visualization to picture. So this is more storytelling and that's kind of like the what I'm a sucker for. But this is the same vibe. New York is in New York without you, love. And if I call you from first avenue, we're the only motherfucker in the city who can handle me. New love wasn't true love. Same like emotional nostalgic even if it wasn't perfect it was us type shit anti-hero this is the most played song on spotify this has 110 million plays in a week that is a lot of plays ladies and gentlemen so let's see what we got I okay. that like that Pfft. dumb dumb hard when my depression works the graveyard shift all over Depression works the graveyard shift. All the people I've ghosted. That is hard. I should not be left to my own devices. They come with prices and vices. I end up in crisis. This, this motherfucker spit. I wake up screaming from dreaming. One day I'll watch as you leaving. Cause you got tired of my scheming. One day you got tired of scheming, so I had to watch you leaving. Bro, she kind of spitting right here. I'll still be scheming on the low. I'll stare directly at the sun, but never in the mirror. It must be exhausting, always rooting for the anti-hero. Must be exhausting, always waiting for the anti-hero, bro. I'll stare at the sun before I stare in the mirror. She's going stupid on this writing right now. One day I'll wake up screaming from dreaming while I watch you leaving and life will lose all its meaning. The rhythm right there of like that delivery. That rhythm is crazy. I, bro, this is the production. Flawless. My daughter-in-law kills me for the money. She thinks I left them in the will. Psych. The family gathers around and reads it and then someone screams out She's laughing up at us from hell <laughs> Hey, ah oh, damn, is it gonna give it away? It's gonna give it away. Everybody mute the stream, mute the video until I like wave my hands like this because I'm about to give away a dead ass spoiler of uh, the movie Knives Out starting right now. That line or that whole like part where she's talking about they killed me for the money and then and they, when they read the will, I laugh because it reminded me of the movie Knives Out where the, the one with all the money in the family, which is the grandfather, dies and then everybody thinks that they're getting like a piece of the legacy <laughs> and he fucking left it he left the money to his his at-home nurse which is the main character of the movie she's laughing from hell that's funny as hell pun intended all right i'm waving now now y'all could come back to stream it sounds like familiar to another song too where she's talking about i'm the problem everybody agrees everybody agrees it's me a reverse drop on this on the clap right here it's me Violet. hi, hi on the problem is nice on the problem it's me times everybody agrees. everybody agrees. 
I know why that song has 10 million plays, 100 million plays. My bad. Lana Del Rey? How come nobody told me she was a guest feature on the album? I understand why that's 110 million plays. It's very relatable um, to people who feel like they're the bad guy because they are. It must be hard always being like a pessimist, but also a narcissist, which makes you the anti-hero. I've ghosted people. I've done people wrong. And in my dreams, I see them creep up. It's a really relatable track, yo. Again, phenomenal songwriting. Regardless if you like her aesthetic, regardless if you like who she is in the public, she's a phenomenal songwriter. We're three for three. Next Snow on the Beach, Lana Del Rey feature. Has no verse, she just... Who is she, Young Jeezy, just providing ad-libs? Ooh, that bass line. Bro, she's, oh, she got bars, bro. Life is abusive. Time couldn't stop me like you did. Also, just so you know, one of the most like, just a fun fact about me, I love going to the beach during winter time. And it's like snow at the beach. Weird, but fucking beautiful. Talk to him, Taylor. <laughs> she knows my vibe. Me tonight feels impossible. But it's coming down, no sound. It's all around like snow on the beach. Oh man, that we're, 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 we're over here. Oh man, the vocal processing is so crazy. The vocal processing on the whole album sounds like sounds like we're listening to her in a dream. Like like it's a little abstract. It's not so straight down the middle. There's a lot of reverb. There's a lot of distortion on her voice. Sometimes it's sacked up, but I feel like this is a really crazy reference and I don't know why this came to my head, but when I listen to this album, when I listen to whether her vocals are processed, I feel like I'm listening to the audio equivalent of what it felt like to watch the movie where the wild things are. I'm kind of like in this abstract dream, but it's a little lucid. But when I wake up, I'll kind of remember. But if I don't think to remember right away, I'll start to forget quickly. That's the vibe that I'm getting from the whole album. This song is gorgeous. Low key might be my favorite song so far. Your eyes are flying saucers from another planet. Now I'm off of you like Janet. Can this be a real thing? Can I? Did she say off of you like Janet, like Janet Jackson? Bro, did you hear the way her vocals got stacked? Like the production went away and it was like, listen to what the fuck I'm saying. Were you listening? Here's three of my vocals at the same time to make sure you're listening. So like bittersweet, bro, this song. I don't know, am I happy? Am I sad? What's the, what am I feeling right now? I'm feeling conflicted. Misusing my influence. I remember when you did the same, Taylor. Man, the plucking of those strings is so like light and playful. Like it feels playful, but the rest of the song sounds dreamy, but also heavy at the same time. She going crazy, bro. Yeah, Lana not having a verse. That was like when I listened to BTS track with, uh, with Halsey and Halsey had like a line. I was like, why did we put Halsey on the track listing? Damn, that would be a great. Hey, imagine if she had. Okay, so imagine like they have beef, current day beef. And then she says featuring Lana Del Rey just to mock her for the fact that she doesn't need her. That would be the most low key baller thing that I've ever seen. Or imagine Eminem puts out Kill Shot featuring him, featuring MGK. That would have been crazy. Uh, all right, that's my favorite song in the album, uh, and it'll probably change every time that I listen to the album. It's one of those type of albums so far where like every song is so good, it's easy to say that this one is my favorite because it's the first it's, I'm listening to it currently. All right, let's keep going. I wait patiently. He's gonna notice me. It's okay. 
Damn, not her using the same lyrics from her first debut project. Which one is it? Where she, where the guy wanted the, the guy wanted the prom queen, but she, but she just wanted her to want him. When he wanted, she wanted him to want her. What's the name of that song? See what I see. Anybody know what song I'm talking about? You belong with me, thank you. I know my shit, kinda. I didn't choose this town, I dream of you getting out, but you can make me stay type shit. That's nice. But anybody feel like the bass line or the guitar line is like the intro to that song? Hey, you lock yourself all day. It was only in a good enough. Sounds like that song. Sprinkler splashes to fireplace ashes is hard. Just to learn you never cared. I see the greatest. The pitch bend up into the next into the next verse. I play my songs in the parking lot. I'll run away from sprinkler splashes to fireplace ashes. The build up, you hear the drums coming in. We haven't had drums the whole time. very chasing like if that was the verb or edge the adverb i love the percussion selection like the type of snare drum they decided to use song sounds like the realization you know what i mean hard bro i actually like this song some people i can i can understand why people might not like it because it's different than the rest of the album in terms of like pacing and in terms of the like the euphoria and her vocal and her vocal production sounds different but i like it because the production matches the sentiment of the song like the sentiment of the song is her coming to realization that's what the production matches like like as we get to the end of the song it almost sounds like the light bulb is clicking on like in her head and the realization is happening at the same time that the percussion is becoming to the climax. Yeah, there, it wasn't a traditional song structure in the sense of, I mean, it was because it had hooks and verses, but the production kind of started minimalistic and then rose to a grand point, but it didn't rise into like a drop, if that makes sense. I enjoyed that one. Midnight Rain, so far the album deserves to be every spot of the top 10 billboard. Whenever I see like a lot of tracks being at the top 10 billboard, I'm like, oh, it's just the Swifties going crazy. It's just the Barb's going crazy. It's just this Harry fans going crazy. It's just the Drake heads going crazy. But all top 10 spots, top 10 spots is absolutely crazy, but it's not even just the Swifties. Like this is gonna appeal to your everyday audience like me. I'm not a diehard Taylor Swift fan in the slightest, but to appeal to a 30s plus male adult, he wanted a comfortable, I wanted the pain. He wanted a bride that was making my own name. Chasing the pain. Is that her pitch down? All of me changed like midnight. Oh my. See, this feels like I'm floating in a dream, bro. Anybody remember the good news music video for Mac Miller RIP like when that video came out and then at the end like his little logo character is like floating through the nebulas in space. That's what this sounds like. My town was a wasteland full of cages, full of fences, pageant queens and pretenders. But for some it was paradise. Oh my God, bro. The distorted like underwater sound of the synth that's bending in my right ear. Ooh, like that. He was sunshine, I was midnight. He wanted a comfortable, I wanted that. <laughs> he wanted Yo. I was making my own name, chasing the fame. He stayed the same. All of me changed 
song about her being toxic because he wanted comfortable but i wanted pain i put myself before the relationship because i wanted to make a name for myself this is like her version of jungle by drake a little bit when he says still finding myself let alone a soulmate i'm just saying being in two different places true being in two different places i can see that but if she held the relationship if someone holds a relationship longer than they know it should go because they know that they, they were not in the same place, then yes, it's toxic. It, she might not intentionally be, be toxic, but by not letting that person go because you know you want something different, that is being toxic. Literally the whole song Tears in the Rain by The Weeknd is about him not letting somebody leave because he was selfish and watched them stay. And now that person has no recollection of the life before them and he destroyed them. You know, it's a nice song because it's like, hey, we wanted something different. I realize now that I, I was more worried about myself than the relationship at that time. It's a very 30 year old thing to do, I guess you could say, to like realize that and not try to place the blame on anybody but yourself for saying, hey, it just happened to be we weren't right at the time. Can't blame it on the time in this time because this time is ours. Shout out me, bar. <laughs> There's forces outside of nature that power divine encounters and we can't blame it on the time in this time because this time is ours. Sign me up, Taylor. Let me get that. Let me get that Lana Del Rey feature. Cause he was sunshine, I was midnight pain. He wanted a comfortable, I wanted that pain. Mm. He wanted a bride, I was making my own name. She's in that fame. He stayed the same. All of me changed like midnight. It is, uh, you say that it's not about her being toxic, but I just heard the line that he was sunshine and she was midnight rain. That is literally, you can unravel that line and understand that as she was the darkness that was holding the sunshine back. Because he was the bright spot in the relationship and she was the midnight rain. While it might not have been toxic, quote unquote, it was toxic at the same time. And he never thinks of me. Mm. Said when I'm on TV. Uh. I guess, and I never think of him. I never think of him except for midnights like this. I'm gonna tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen. Taylor Swift might have the album of the year. Not saying for sure because we got Jid. She's up there though right now with Jesse Reyes' album. Jesse Reyes is an amazing songwriter, in my personal opinion. Like one of the most talented pop, alternative pop R&B songwriters. Jesse Reyes' pen is different because Jesse Reyes writes like a rapper. Uh, she writes pop, like pop and R&B and breakup music like a rapper normally would. So that's what makes it like that edge for me. But this is extremely visceral, bro. Production on that track was my favorite so far of the album. Owning up is like such an, a, such an adult and mature thing to do. Like, hey, I was fucked up during that time. I was selfish during that time. And I'm sorry that I put you through that. I'm sorry that you have to see me on TV, and I'm sorry that I have to think of us during Midnight Rain. Good girl, sad boy, big city, wrong choices. We had one thing going on. I swear that it was something, cause I don't. God, man, she writes such good breakup tracks. She's the Drake of pop music. Listen, you can hear them calling my name. I'm all over the place. I can't sit in one place. I'm not ashamed at all was something cause i don't remember who i was before you painted all my nights a color i've searched for since but one thing after you painted all my nights a color that i've searched for since <laughs> how she this good how is she this good we're only 14 seconds into the song i'm pausing it more than i said hey i'm not really gonna pause it that much because it's pop music it's not gonna be really I'm pausing it more than I pause rap music right now. But one thing after another fucking 
in situations, circumstances, miscommunications, and I have to say, by the way, I just may like some explanations. Can I ask you a question? Did you ever have someone kiss you in a crowded room? Top five pet peeves of all fucking time. When somebody says, hey, can I ask you a question? Just ask it, bitch. Why you got to throw this unnecessary amount of tension into the situation? Hate that shit. Did you wish you'd put up more of a fight up? When she said it was too much, do you wish you could still touch her? It's just a question. Half moon. It's never just a question, but I agree with you, Basile. This whole, the whole hook right here is not as strong as the other hooks that we've heard so far. It's not necessarily a bad hook, but it's nowhere near as strong as the ones that we've heard. On your mind with some dickhead guy that you saw that night. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Let that hoe breathe. And every single one of your friends was making fun of you. 15 seconds later they were clapping too Does it feel like everything's just like second best after that meteor strike And what's that bridge that kinda I mid that you're still with her that's nice. bridge kinda mid sure on forge I think it's just the rhythm of the lyrics that's just like kinda jerk jerky jerky not to be like creatively saying that I'm better than Taylor because I'm clearly not. But if it was me writing that bridge, I would have had like all of the music drop out. But maybe like the synth rewrite the lyrics to not be so herky jerky, maybe a little more sad and then be like, these are the questions that were running through my mind. And then on the second on the like the very last hook, then come back in with full production. You know, that's just me, though. Like instead of this, rewrite all this and just have a, like a long synth. Full production. I ask you a question? Like that would have been hard. That might have made it more generic though if it was that, but still. It's just a question. Uh question. It's not as good as the other tracks. Um, the bridge didn't like the bridge at all. The melody of this song is nowhere near as strong. It just seems very discombobulated maybe is the word that I'm looking for. Like just the herky jerkiness of the bridge that I just wasn't a fan of. But let's go, Vigilante shit. Still so far a solid album. That's not like gonna take away from the rating so much. It's not like that was so shit that, never mind, we're out of the running for album of the year, you know? You did some bad things, but I'm the worst of them. I don't dress for women. I don't dress for men. Lately I've been dressing for revenge. Ooh. I don't start shit, but I can tell you how it ends. This is very Billie Eilish. I don't know if Billie Eilish like heads and Swifties like are fucking at, at like each other's throat. So I might be causing a ruckus if they are. I might be stirring the pot. But Billie's attitude and Phineas reduction is more convincing. I think it's also Billie's voice that's more convincing. Not that this isn't a bad song. This is solid. Her voice is good here, but Billie's like attitude and swagger and her image is just more in line with this song. So this song is going to be more surprising to me than it would Billie, but similar sounds. Not that it's trying to be, but it sounds very inspired by the end of what's the end of I forgot what song it is where it's like, I like when you get mad. Oh, and it's like, burn. You know what I'm talking about? Bad guy. Yep. She needed cold hot Ooh. Hot, so I, gave I do like the very minimal production in this. It's just a very aggressive sound without like crazy sense or anything because it's very dark. It's a dark sentiment dressing for revenge type shit. Now she gets the house Does that Scorpio the rising energy? She looks so Pisces crazy. horizontal. Driving in your bands. Lately she's been dressing for revenge. Ooh. So dirty though. She looks so good driving in your oof. Driving in your bands. Lately she's been dressing for a van. I like the way she pitches her voice though. She don't like start that. shit, but she can tell you how it ends. She don't start shit, but she can tell you how it ends, baby. <laughs> hard this is already a way better beef between this her and some imaginary person than the whole lotto Nicki minaj bullshit she don't dress for friends lately she's been dressing for revenge the pitch down the pitch down on that melody like the melody resolve ladies know what 
people want someone sweet and kind and fun the ladies oh yeah she ate it the fuck up all day pretty it's giving all it needs to give well, he was doing lines and crossing all of mine Ooh, that's such a Drake bar, and I'm fucking living for it. He was doing lines of cocaine while he was crossing all of mine. Bought you a Benz, but that don't make you driven. Well, he was doing lines <laughs> and crossing all of mine. Dirty. Someone told his white collar crimes to the FBI. White collar crimes, lines, cocaine. Oh, yeah, I didn't think I was going to like this at first don't because of the whole Billy thing. Get even. On the weekend, but she killing it. I don't dress for friends. Lately, I've been dressing for revenge. Ooh, Taylor, I fucking love that. Hey, anybody else think this about the album cover? Anybody else think that this right here reminds you of uh the movie with Megan Fox, Jennifer's Body, where she like puts the lighter up to her tongue that track made up for the track before again wasn't trying to stir the pot but always kind of am i love stirring the pot it's my favorite thing to do i was a witch in a past life that's how much i love stirring the pot i was at the salem trials that's how i'm here now because they fucking burned me alive at the stake uh but didn't mean to stir the pot between the billy heads and the taylor heads but similar sounds but taylor kind of owned it in her own different way which i enjoy because it could have been and could have easily been a ripoff of, of uh, Este, what's her name? Who did I just say? Billie Eilish and Phineas? Phineas's production is so unique. Billy wouldn't exist without Phineas, I'm letting you know right now. She would just be another good singer, but Phineas' production is, but that's also what makes this song different than Billy because it's a different producer. Amazing track. All right, next, Bejeweled. How far are we into the album? We're only nine tracks in the 20-track album. Jesus Christ, why do I take so long doing these? Let's keep going. Baby love, I think I've been a little too kind Didn't notice you walking all over my peace of mind <laughs> The shoes I gave you as a present Couldn't someone first only work I've been too kind, didn't notice you were walking all over my peace of mind With shoes that I gave you as a present I'm going out tonight Don't call me, I'm going out with the, the girls I'm still bejeweled when I walk in the room I can still make the hopes they shimmer I'm on the fence about this one so far. You know what makes Taylor's music, what makes it so enjoyable? She doesn't like have a crazy vocal range where I'm like, like if I'm singing this in the car, I'm hitting every note, no problem. It's not like I'm listening to Listen by Beyonce and I just got to shut the fuck up for the last two minutes of the song. She's going crazy. All the extra credit then got great and on a curve. I think it's time to teach some lessons. I you my world. Have you Did all the extra credit but was graded on a curve? Welcome to fucking communism, ladies and gentlemen. I can reclaim the land. And I miss you. But I miss Familiarity breeds contempt. So put me in the basement when I want the penthouse of your heart. Diamonds in my eyes. I polish up real. I polish up real. Diamonds polish up real nice as a bar, um, but I don't like how rushed the familiarity breeds content. That sounds extremely rushed, and it kind of takes me out of the fucking hook. I'm gonna dance all night, and you can try to change my mind, but you might have to wait in line. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan of this one so much. I think we might have our first miss. I don't like the melody at all. It's like if I was... See, familiarity breeds content put me in the basement it's like so rushed like she's trying to get it all out sounds just like spewing words out yeah the whole be jewel when i walk in the room i can make the whole place shimmer like to me that's not a good melody uh so that one's gonna be a miss there's not really much to say about it i said what i said during the middle of the song all right let's move on from that labyrinth or is it labyrinth and labyrinth is the singer So much atmosphere in the music in the production. I 
thought the plane was going down. How did you turn it right around? I'm falling in love again. I like that. Her vocal stacking and harmony right here. in her semitone on her voice could have gone on honestly never mind by drake it kind of has that same feel as uh like flight's book that type of track that one's like a very you kind of just vibe to that one it's very dreamy and then brought and like grounded into reality a little bit when the beat drops in i enjoyed that this next track i definitely have heard before at least the hook i think i've had 20 different women posted on a story in one form or fashion or another uh, maybe somebody used it in the background of a stream one time uh, maybe i saw it on the TikTok. this is just that track karma let's just go ahead and give it a gander karma is a calm cat sitting in my lap karma is the breeze growing through the trees motherfuckers want to bring me down to my knees he's talking shit for the hell of it and i keep my side of the street clean you Spider Boy? Is that a direct call out to what's his name? Um, this one is gonna get all the women going crazy. This is the quotable track from Instagram. This is the breakup track. This is the ones that's gonna convince the women that they're doing all right when God knows they're doing bad because they're still heartbroken, but they're gonna pretend like they're not. They're gonna try to move on. She's gonna be posting these captions. She's gonna be dressed on her vig vigilante shit with a fucking quote from this song. Her gonna, she gonna make her IG profile public in hopes that the boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, goes back and looks and sees the subtweet. That's it. That's what the song's about. Shoot me twice. Don't you know the cash ain't the only price? It's coming back around. The cash ain't the only price. It's fire. It's karma is my boyfriend. Karma is a god. Karma is the breeze in my hair on the weekend. This track is 100% written to be an anthem. I get the I get the sentiment of the song. Uh, I just know that people are going to run this into the ground, and they already are. This is one where the, she's writing with the producer in the studio, and then they hear it like back after they lay down the first cut, and then they turn to each other, and they're like, the hoes going to love this. The that's hard like the rise and then the harmony rise at the same time karma is the guy on the screen coming straight home to me blasting the shit and sleep on her you want to know the crazy part i hate to break it to y'all but he gonna be just fine you might believe in karma but he doesn't and he doing great you believe in karma to make yourself feel good about the breakup hoping that some shit goes wrong on his side and he's just out there partying with the boys living his good old life if i were a female that song would probably hit harder and it would hit harder if it was my true first listen obviously i know what the song's about already the girl's gonna be like oh she was hit fucking in her bag on this one this motherfucker's spitting guys out there if you see a girl post on ig and she got any of these lyrics as the caption of the track of, of the of the picture that's when you know it's time to start sliding in the dms because she's single now only karma i believe in is reddit karma 
it was written to be a it was written to be a radio song and you can tell uh let's move on sweet nothing this is track number 12 we're, we're approaching the end of the regular album i spy with my little tired eye tiny as a firefly a pebble that we picked up last july the synth i don't know it sounds kind of lullaby -y, like in a good way in a good way we nothing's outside they push and shove in. you're in the kitchen home and all that you ever wanted from me was sweet nothing It all just sounds like a dream. Like she used to read Word Up magazine and saw Pepper and Heavy D up in the limousine. It sounds like a lullaby because the lull lullabies are des designed and written to sound peaceful and like relaxing and most importantly safe. So this song's not not safe in like terms of she didn't take creative freedom, but like the sentiment of the song and who she's talking about and this moment that she's talking about, she feels safe as a person. And the voices that implore, you should be doing more. To you, I can admit that I'm just too soft for all of it. Hmm. To you, can I can admit I'm too soft for all of it? They said the end is coming. Everyone's up to something. I find myself a running home to your sweet nothings. Outside they're pushing, shoving. You're in the kitchen, I'm in. This would be a good wedding song for a Swifty. You're in the kitchen, I'm in the kitchen. All that you ever wanted from me was sweet nothing. That would have been a good spot to end the album. This is technically the last track on the actual album, not the deluxe 3 a.m. edition. Um, so I don't know what this one's going to sound like. That was a good song, though. I enjoyed that one. Obviously, it's not going to like hit the same. It's not going to be like, oh, shit, you know, because it's not meant to be that song. But good enough. Once upon a time, the planets in the face and all the stars aligned. So what if I told you none of it was accidental? And the this is not going in the direction I thought. Me, nothing was going to stop me. I laid the groundwork and then just like clockwork, the dominoes cascaded in a line. What if I told you I'm a mastermind? Cause I'm a mastermind. I do like that line. It was all by design. Like you think that everything just happened by chance and you happened to be here and we met each other by chance. Nah, like this was the plan all along. I like that. I like that line. Strategy sets the scene for the tale. I'm the wind in our free flowing sails. And the liquor in cocktails what if i told you none of it was accidental and the first night that you saw me i knew i wanted your body no one wanted to play with me as a little kid so i've been scheming like a criminal ever since to make i feel like we and make it seem effortless. i feel like we started on like a very like coming in hot and we're going out as like a very like peaceful serene no it was an aggressive start but it was a very like energetic start and we're kind of going out on like a very uh, tight feel. So I told you none of it was accidental. And the first night that you saw me, nothing was going to stop me. I laid the groundwork and then saw a white smirk on your face. You knew the entire time. You knew that I'm a mastermind. This would be a good wedding song, too, for the Swifties. Especially if they were the one that pursued the relationship. All right. Okay. How do we feel? How do we feel about it? The end of the album, not that it's bad, but it didn't hold the same. Basically, what I'm trying to say is not going to be my album of the year. Just because the last like three or four songs here, they were they didn't hit me in the same way that the first five, six, seven tracks did. Lavender Haze, Maroon, Antihero, Snow on the Beach, You're on Your Own Kid, Midnight Rain, Vigilante Shit, Labyrinth. Those are all the 100% bangers for me. Karma, way too much of a radio TikTok written to be. It just doesn't appeal to me. It's not, I'm not the genre for the song. Uh, the genre for the song is definitely Swifties. Um, so I understand why everybody's tweeting that shit and quoting it and putting it all over their stories and shit, but that's just not going to be me. Uh, Sweet Nothing was a nice little uh, lullaby style and Mastermind was a nice ending as well. I'm glad that Mastermind didn't go like out of nowhere, go crazy heavy again, because to go from Sweet Nothing to Mastermind, what type of finish would that be? 
So she stuck with the whole finish it off softly thing. Um, but in terms of like, will I listen to these songs again? Sweet Nothing and Mastermind are a little too soft for me to like have them in constant rotation. And that's just a personal preference. I normally don't like ballads like that. It's not, they're not even really ballads. It's just, I don't have any moments in my life where like this song would fit whatever the vibe that I'm doing is. Um, so like if I'm at the gym, Lavender Haze, Maroon, Antihero, Vigilante shit. If I'm here at home, I'm not really listening to music outside of what we're making videos for. If I'm in the car, I'm probably not gonna be jamming, you know, soft pop music. So for me personally, it's not going to be the album of the year for me. But if you are like a true pop head and uh, cause I'm not a pop head, I, I like listen to pop, but not, that's not my main genre. If you're a subscriber of HT Hayes, it probably is your main genre of music you listen to or a bigger portion of your life. I could see why you would listen to mastermind and sweet nothing. Uh, I can see why people listen to karma again. That's kind of like a standalone, like that was written to be for TikTok. That's almost what it sounds like. Labyrinth was good. I like the end of Labyrinth. That shit went crazy. Bejeweled didn't like the bridge. That one was the only mid one. If I'm being honest, the only mid ones for me, Question and Bejeweled, and for sure it's just Bejeweled. If I listen to Question a couple more times, it might hit, but for sure Bejeweled and Question are the two questionables, no pun intended. So overall on the album, what am I feeling on the album overall? One, Lavender Haze, Maroon, Antihero, Snow on the Beach, You're on Your Own, Midnight Rain, Vigilante shit labyrinth for sure repeating those that's eight out of 13 uh if we add in sweet nothing and mastermind to the ones that i definitely like that's 10 out of 13 so i would probably give it like a seven and a half seven here's what i'll say about the order of the way these albums were put out one of the reasons why this album has as much hype as it does personally like my own personal opinion is because it came after the softness and the acoustic vibe and the warm vibe of, of folklore and ever is it evermore. Is that the name of it? This is much dreamier. I guess you could say it's such a stark difference between the two albums that it's like, holy shit, this is hitting way harder. But if this, but if this album came after like an album, like reputation, it wouldn't be as surprising or as jarring because we're staying in the same sound. Yeah. Reputation is good. I'm not saying that it's on the level of reputation. I do think that this song is better than reputation. But in terms of like the sonics, it doesn't, it sounds more like reputation than it does sound like Evermore and Evermore and Folklore. I think the stark difference between the two, the fact that this came after that, people are like, oh shit, we're in a new era of Tyler. Of Tyler. <laughs> we're in a new era of Taylor. If it came after an album like Reputation, it would have just been another pop, it would have just been another pop album. So it might not have hit as hard. So I think the album's placement in her catalog definitely makes it hit harder. It's almost like a highlighter to it. Um, after the very, I guess you could say like serene sound of folklore, uh, but her album, I mean, her songwriting is top tier. Songwriting is top tier. Overall enjoyed it. Not my album of the year, but definitely could see why people are going to have it on their album of the year. And I could see, I could see this definitely making a wave in the Grammy side.